Hey, this is Justin with Define Audio Video, and this hey. is... Oh, oh, sorry. Wait, wait. Sorry. Hi, this is Tony with Define Audio Video. You're not Tony. And the, I'm Tony. Okay, sorry. This Let's is, try this again. Th this is Tony from Define Audio Video. No. Okay. What, am I a gremlin now? I'm Justin. And this is Tony. And this is our Technology Rocks podcast. Thank goodness... We found a name, Tony. Can we cheers on that for a minute? Because the last two names were really hard, also copyrighted, uh, <laughs> but really hard to say, really hard to decide on which one we were going to be. And then we went in a completely different direction because we're both m musicians, both do musical things, and we both rock. So technology rocks just stuck like spaghetti on a wall. And what are we talking about today, Tone? We are talking about what we call cutting the cord. Cutting the cord. So what I, what I mean by that is, we you know, getting rid of cord. cable. You shall not. Sorry. Sorry, that, that had nothing to do with cutting the cable. I, just, I was about to say, that is that is about, you know, clearly restriction my, of passage. M clearly my coffee has now kicked in congratulations for your morning drive to work hopefully you find this entertaining thank you so much for listening to our last show so we're gonna cut the cord today tony so what is so what is the phrase cutting the cord typically refers to not an umbilical cord but your cable service so tony and i probably get asked this question no less than 30 times 30 times a week uh, all ages, how do I make my cable bill cheaper? And typically it's to make the cable bill cheaper. How do I cut the cord? How do I do this? How do I do that? But it always has to do with, it. All the sentence always starts with, I hate my cable service, or I hate paying X, Y, and Z per month. So we're gonna talk about that today. Uh, I'm a cord cutter. Tony's a cord cutter. Um, I in don't really miss my cable box. I, I don't really miss it after I've done it. There's several reasons why I don't miss it. Uh, however, Tony, is it really cheaper? Well, is it this, really this cheaper? This is the point that you know uh, just kind of came up in my head is if you have cable with a lot of the different services, if you are paying for a cable service then they will allow you then to use like paramount plus if you have a cable service yep you can log into paramount plus then and use their app at no additional cost but if you have fubo for instance and you want to you, know, you want to log so into fubo, paramount for those that don't know is a streaming service yeah so with fubo if you decide you want to go into paramount plus and watch a a show i know the previously aired you're gonna have to pay separately for that app so at that point now you gotta look into how many streaming services besides your like television like streaming service that you're adding to it to see if it's really cheaper or if you're actually paying more so that's a good point. So and that's and that was our general point is, you know, most people are looking to cut the cord to save money. It's a monetary thing, you know, when lo when eggs are $4 for a carton and you can't go through a McDonald's or a Whataburger drive-through for under $18 for one person now or in and out burger for $16, you know, it, it's People are looking for ways to cut costs. So what we want to do is talk about that. And are you really cutting the cost? Because what happens is when you – a lot of times when you cut your cable service, as Tony just stated, it's put into a package, meaning you have HBO or you have Stars or you have one of these what we call add-on things. You have ESPN, which we have some interesting news about ESPN we, we learned yesterday. Um, the – it's added into that package at X, Y, and Z per month. So when you cut that, well, now you don't have HBO anymore and say you want HBO, well, that's 10 bucks a month. We'll say you want Showtime, that's another 10 bucks a month. But then now you want streaming TV service, well, that's between 30 to $70 a month. 
devil's advocate here, Tone. Are you really saving money? Yes and no. <clears throat> okay, I'll take the yes and no. Go for it. So, the yes, if you don't add anything additional to it. If you strictly... Bare bones. If you just buy the service, and uh, which, like with... And I keep using this as an example because it's what I use. Fubo. With Fubo, you know, you can pay up to, like, 100 bucks a month. And that gives you pretty much every channel that they offer. So that keeps me from having to have all the different stream you know, streaming services additionally added. I know. So that saves me on what used to be a two hundred dollar cable bill. But when I had that two hundred dollar cable bill, I also still had all of my streaming services. So at this point. With that hundred dollars a month, I don't have all those streaming services anymore. So for me, it's saving me money. So here's here's another interesting thing. And I, as as Tony is talking, I'm trying to log in to a just an Xfinity website just to look at the pricing. The pricing is very hidden. It's bare. It's almost buried in the website where you have to put now you have to put I already did that so when you hit build your plan you're literally putting your name your address and everything else so and you I can you yeah, well it's not that it's so they can there well it probably is that you know so that's the thing is when you hide your pricing that typically means you're more expensive than everybody else but here's the other interesting thing that I just I but I'm also, gonna jump on your platform expensive. for a minute more expensive because they may offer more than the other service. True, and I'm going to jump on your 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 um, wagon for a minute. Is what streaming allows you to do is demographic areas that do not allow you to use Xfinity or do not allow you to use a certain service, you can now use it wherever you want as long as you have internet, which kind of carries right from the topic we were on on episode one which was disc media versus internet now i'm going to jump on the tony train for a second on this one and say tone my streaming service is probably going to be absolutely useless if my internet goes out is am i not wrong um you are not wrong and that's the other thing but at the same time with cable I mean, that's depending upon which company you're with, whether it be DirecTV, Xfinity, or whoever it is. Yep. You could still, even with cable, lose, uh, lose your service. So typically, this conversation starts with, I have X, Y, and Z at home. I have Dish. I have DirecTV. I have Xfinity at home, and I want to cancel my cable service. Right. And, 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 but the thing is, is typically the second question that, that T Dog or myself will ask is, okay, what else are you using? You know, okay, well, we have Netflix and we have uh, Hulu and we have uh, Amazon Prime and we have Peacock and we have Disney Paramount. Was. But so why is the cable service the villain? You know, because you're 10 and 15 dollaring yourself to death, right? Well, the fact that they have Hulu and DirecTV, that's like, you know, having two of the exact same car in the exact same color. I wonder if DirecTV is affiliated with Disney. Because if Hulu is affiliated with DirecTV and DirecTV and Disney is... May fall under that umbrella. Disney, Hulu is owned... I have to look that up. Uh, Disney owns 81% of the shares in Hulu, as we found out, and also ESPN, 61% of ESPN. Um, no, 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 that's it's 80% of ESPN. Is it 80%? Yeah. And maybe I got them mixed you, you up. Got so 60, okay, got them flipped. So that's the thing. So that's the interesting part about cutting the cord, and that's what we always tell people is... Are you really saving money or is it just it, it, are you just bored and you want something different? Well, right? It's like it's like when I used to uh, work for uh, the garbage company. The garbage company. It was all about the add-ons. Add uh, add-on and add-on and add-on until they say stop. So, 
what these streaming services are all doing is they're adding eh, having you add on and add on and add on till like you know but they're doing it now by saying oh we have this hbo exclusive series right oh we have this netflix exclusive series so now at this point it's like well if i want to watch yellowstone I've right. got to have Paramount Plus, or I have to have a cable service or right. streaming service that has that station. So let's look at this for a so, minute. Dip- so the 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 Xfinity top of the line one hundred and eighty five plus channel package, and now it's hitting the price again sixty eight dollars and fifty cents a month, and that's not including. Your add-on channels. Yeah, that's, like that's your HBO's, including. your Cinemax, right. your, you know, all that Which stuff. some people, uh, some people can live or not live without that. I grew up without cable television in my house. Uh, I thought it was weird when my parents got it when we moved out of the house. And still think it's weird that they have it, even though we moved out of the house. But that's, that's my parents got cable as well. Oh, I know. As soon as, as, soon as all the boys moved out of the house, then, 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 then. But here's, here's what I want you to see, though. On this, so at that sixty-eight dollars and fifty cent. Now, remember, this is the hundred. Yes, you have a TV fee. I bet there's of, a fuel charge somewhere of on there. Thirty-nine dollars a month. You have a broadcast TV fee now of twenty-seven eighty-five a month. You have a regional sports fee of eleven so twenty-five you can watch your a local month. Sports. Meaning that your your hundred and eighty-five channel TV package now costs a hundred and seven hundred and seven dollars and sixty cents. Per month, that's not including your box rental. That's not including how many box because typically it's ten bucks a box. And they home. only give you like I think it's like two or three boxes, and then right. after that they are gonna nickel and dime you till your yeah. Oh, children. sorry, your box rental seven dollars and fifty cents per box per month. So if you have a giant house, which Tony and I go into some of these houses all the time. If you have a giant house with like fi- ten of them. with fifteen, 15. rooms, yeah, you got ten cable boxes, then that's a, that, that's a lot quick of money. Math on that. Yeah, no, that's a quick math on it. You know, you do seven fifty per month, uh, and then you multiply that by let's say ten cable boxes. That's another seventy two dollars that's added to your bill. That's not even including internet. So yes, cable. Is that's more, why you're two hundred dollars. That's that I why was. you're two hundred bucks a month, and we're not even talking about movie channels yet. We're just talking about what's included. Build your plan, so you can go to a different site, and there's five different pages of movie add-ons, which are ten extra, ten bucks a month, fifteen bucks a month, twenty bucks a month. So yes, to your point, it is expensive. However, let's go do the math backwards. So Tony's mentioned Fubo a lot. So if I go to the top Fubo, cha- well, no, let's keep it fair. Let's keep it fair. Um, if I go to the, what they call the pro package, which is 186 channels, 1,000 movies of NVR, you do not need a cable box to do this. Uh, it's $59 a month after trial. So eventually your Pay your TV service is going to go up to eighty bucks a month, so it's right there in that same and pocket. You're only, and you're only price locked on that for so many months, right? So, and if you do the Showtime add-on, then it again it jumps up to a hundred bucks a month. So that's what I'm saying. The only thing that I can see is you're not getting broadcast fees, you're not getting the taxes, you're not getting the box rental. So yes, in all reality, it's cheaper. However, here's where here's where it goes sideways and twisty. What happens is be- when you get uh, lulled to sleep in your money savings, that's when you start adding on yourself. That's when, you, oh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do HBO but, Max. I'm going to go ahead and do – oh, go ahead. But real quick before you get into all that. Yeah. This is still cheaper than if you went with DirecTV, which, look at this. This right here for their top package is only 140 channels, 
for 120 bucks. 120 bucks a month. Yeah. Yeah, 100 it's Fubo. still cheaper than Direct TV. Fubo's still cheaper than Direct TV. Yeah, so you could get you can get their premier package which is 262 channels, 1000 hours of DVR which you don't really need DVR anymore. We'll get to that in a minute. Oh, but it does <clears throat> include stars though. So you do get 4K, a movie channel. Yeah, but this includes Showtime. What do you want, Showtime or Stars? I mean, so that's... Actually, I have a subscription to Stars. So, so you, you, you like Stars. Well, that's okay. Watch, so... But I haven't been using it, however, so I'm actually going to be Direct TV that. Stream has unlimited screens. This only has up to 10 screens. Then you can get into more where you can get up to unlimited screens, and then it's the next... That's when it starts snowballing, and then you get to that same... 150, 130 bucks a month for streaming cable service. Okay. Now, also, you got where I was talking about on demand earlier. You can on demand stuff. Like, there's a, on Direct TV, on their basic, like, crap package, it's got over 40,000. Is that what they call it? The crap package? Uh, no. The no, entertainment. No. <laughs> anyway. It's four. You got forty thousand on say, that they on talk, demand thing. They need to talk to their their marketing. So, here, but here's here. I'm going to touch on this on demand thing for a second, right? So, if you're comfortable with not having live television, now, ladies and gentlemen, that means no Astros, no Texans, no Super Bowl. If you don't care about any. If of that you stuff don't like care me. about any of that stuff, like like me as well, then you could go to Hulu. With no ads <clears throat> for seventeen bucks a month. Seventeen bucks a month, no commercials. Watch it on demand. You can watch The Voice. You can watch whatever. Grey's Anatomy, Law and Order, all the things. And you can have up to <laughs> six different user profiles, which means that six different people can six have different people. their like mo uh, movies and TV suggestions. Yep. <clears throat> watch on two screens at the same time. So here's the thing. That's the only thing. They right don't there. really, like but they're stuff. not really enforcing that. Like I've never seen, I've never been in a situation where I got a message that comes on my screen. You're watching Hulu in two different rooms. I've never seen it, but I have seen well, it with Fubo. Fubo all the time. I can't watch Fubo yeah. at all because it comes up. But we also time. know that we've got to change. You, you've got to change the password on that because there's people using that. that yeah, be. probably. So. Um, now, if you go into their Hulu No Commercials Live TV, it's still only $90. No ads, and it comes with Disney Plus, and it has a which, ESPN. if you've got kids, let's be real, you're watching Disney you're Plus or grandkids. Now, you can also you do have your add-ons. It doesn't give you the price on your add-ons, but you do have your add-ons such as you have all of those. Other you have available. HBO Max, which isn't called HBO Max anymore. Don't know why. Uh, Cinemax, uh, Showtime, Stars, Skinamax. unlimited screens, eighty nine bucks a month. It still beats everybody. It really does beat everybody price point wise with no commercials. So here's what I'll say about this: the if you're doing this to be for monetary to be frugal. reasons. I just, just you don't want to pay for stuff you're not watching. I mean, I'm never home. You're never home. You know, uh, I, that's typically the reason. I'm not going to pay for something that I don't have time to watch or I'm not sitting there and yeah, watching. I don't need the live part because I'm not there for live. I know of a lady that, that only activates it uh, for her business when sports events come around, you know, because there's no reason uh, to pay yes. for it. There's no reason to pay for it any other time, you know, and... Uh, so there's there there's a lot of things that that, that is a cool part about streaming. No contracts. TV is, no contracts. Yeah, is it? Well, they haven't done that yet, but you know they're going to. You it, know it's well, coming. I, I don't know because I think that's one of the benefit of it. Because here's the thing: if I had well, a the benefit of mm -hmm. Amazon Prime was you didn't have ads, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden they've thrown in ads. Well, I have a so. I have a theory Quote on that. Unquote, well, I have a th ads. so I have a theory on that one. So that that's the interesting part. But but moving into this, it's if you <clears throat> it, if you have a thin month, you know, if you have a lean month and you're on top shelf ramen noodle soup, then as as my boss from a hundred years ago used to say, you don't sell something, you're going to be on top ramen this month, that type of thing. Uh, yes, I'm not old. Um, 
the thing is, is you can cancel it. You can save your 80 bucks that month for the next month and, you know, get away with, with canceling it and, and doing that. And it's a, it's a very simple process. It really is. The only thing that they'll tell you is that your NVR stuff disappears. Like they're not going to save your stuff. If you decide the month after that you're in high cotton again, and then you just, you know, you jump back into your streaming service. So, um, <clears throat> but who cares? I, I don't use my NVR anyway. The reason why is because if I have Hulu, I can go into HGTV. I can go into the only thing that breaks my beloved heart is the History Channel. Uh, they don't have the History Channel, which kills me. Um, I can go into these services and watch it when I want to watch it. You know, I don't have to record it anymore, which makes recording and DVRs and physical hard drives redundant. Right now. So, oh, perfect. So, yeah, no. So, if I'm back into Hulu, this is Hulu, right? Okay. No, no, no. No, no, no. This right here is a breakdown of all your different streaming services and what they Yeah, are. no. So, this perfect. Yeah. So, if we go look at – so, if you cancel cable but yet you want a, well, you want what's called Max now, which is now HBO Max or HBO. Which you can watch like Food Network stuff on and on. Ad it's, free is 20 bucks a month. Boom. You get hit with 20 bucks. If you do Peacock, which we have Peacock with no ads, that's – 12 bucks a month. So Apple TV Plus, $2? 9 bucks a month. Paramount Plus it, with Showtime, so that's a combo. That's kind of a dual package. 11 bucks a month. So, so 30, looking at annual cost, $119 a year annual cost. And if you have eight of those services, it's costing you over 800 bucks a year, more than 800 bucks a year to get what you may already receive with your cable company. So that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> YouTube premium is only $14. <clears throat> yes, YouTube premium. That, so but it, it looks like that's an add-on. <clears throat> Excuse add me. Add-on to YouTube TV. So which if is you look, but if you look at this, if you go to YouTube, the base plan, but they trick you too. You, you, your brain sees this month, but when it says... 10 bucks off the first so it's actually 72 bucks for their base plan however here's an interesting part about youtube and i love this i love it i love it i love it i love it they now have the rights to nfl sunday ticket so i am not an nfl guy i could give a crud less than about football in general but i find it fascinating that they beat out the big that's been the juggernaut from the very beginning with the nfl network out of their own game they beat out direct tv on NA, nhl nfl sunday ticket they beat them so for one for you guys that don't know what sunday ticket is that's a split screen for your nfl program uh where you can watch multiple games at one time to tony's point you can do that on fubo anyway uh, if you know how to use the no, back pedal buttons, view. right? Yeah, no, it's it's a combination of buttons to get it to do it. Especially if you're on an Apple TV remote. Especially if you're on an Apple TV remote. So let's talk about this. So uh, I did a demographic just overlook before we started. So it, it, what's interesting is if you're the age of 19 to 27, right? Most of those people from 19 to 27 do not have cable TV service. In fact, most of them do not have a streaming TV service. They watch their phones. They use Netflix on their phones. They use Apple TV Plus on their phones. They use uh, on and on and on it goes. They would rather watch their phone or their iPad then watch TV with their other significant other or whatever because it's like, the, it's like those glasses that they're glued uh, to their that, phones, Tony. That Ian brought in where they can put that on and they can. I be forgot. Watching, I will have to ask the high tech. Watching a hundred and seventy-two inch screen. He's talking about Ian Grain right now. He's our biggest fan because we have one. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we call him the high tech redneck. That'd be our if, if only you fan. Want, if you have the most <laughs> random. AV question and he's from the UK this man will find a way to do it and find a way to do it that's Better. just out of the left field that you've never thought of so he walked in yeah, here I mean, this guy made like a laptop that wouldn't even stay on it was in a 
Oh, he's a loop genius. Boot up screen. Yeah, I got my my stuff back working. So this guy's awesome. Yeah. But no, anyway, so so hi, Ian. We'll have to have you on the show again. We call him the high tech redneck because he's just figures out the cheapest way to do whatever he's trying to do. There was this thing. There's this new thing about the Apple glasses. They look stupid. By the way, uh, they they're cool, but I just uh, no. Anyway, so he brought his version of the Apple glasses that he found on they're Amazon. X-ray <clears throat> something, and they're actually really neat. Uh, they're they're kind of the um, the not as polished looking as the Apple glasses are. They look but like, they look yeah. like Ray Ban. Yeah. Anyway, so we digress. So anyway, and I'm sure Ian will have something to weigh in on this topic. Again, we've got to have him on the show, mainly because he has an accent and I love accents. So we'll just have to, we'll have to have a, a game of how long is it going to take Justin for not, to, how long is it going to take Justin to not do the Mr. Grain accent? So anyway, um, with what that being mean, said, Grain? I forgot. I totally lost the point of what we were we were talking. Oh, the demographics. That's right. So, the younger demographic is typically is now because they're Facebook hooked and Instagram hooked and things like that. They're actually using their phones more than they're watching TV. And if they are watching TV, they're using a Roku or an Amazon Fire Stick even more so than Apple TV, mainly because of the price. The price of a Roku, the price of a Fire Stick is between. Uh, I think 30 bucks to, to 50 bucks, somewhere in there. And they use those because of <clears throat> they're, they're more cost effective than an Apple TV, even though Apple TV works better, looks better, sounds better, does everything better and faster and doesn't go out as much as those two platforms. Um, so it's interesting. It's very, very interesting to see that. Now, moving forward, if you are mid-20s to mid-30s, as you get closer into, I, no, no, let's back that up. Late twenties to mid thirties, it's a fifty. It's 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 actually fifty percent. Half of them use cable service. The other half actually uses streaming. This year, uh, Super Bowl. This year's Super Bowl was actually the first time in NFL history that the Super Bowl has been aired that. There were more people streaming than watching it on the cable box. So that's that well, yeah, just kind of shows that just, you. That's showing you back with our. Episode the, one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, where it's going. Streaming is becoming a big thing, but streaming is going to have to get better. Streaming is going to have to get. In fact, I, so here's a. Okay, we won't, we'll put a pin on that one. But so, okay, so going back, it's a 50 50 thing. Some of it's cable box, some of it's streaming. Now, this is where it gets interesting, Tone. When you get into mid 30s to mid 40s, it leans more toward cable box. And then when you get past mid 40s, I mean, like a minute, like a uh, two numbers past mid oh, like 40s like so me. late 40s it, when you become ancient like you uh no that was rude uh when, but when you but when you go to late Says 40s a man with more gray hair than me le- <laughs> i've had gray hair since i was 17 there's nothing i can do about it. everybody <laughs> says who does your hair and i'm like god uh, my mom you know like my dad you know I, my dad's had santa claus hair since i was born so anyway when you get into late 40s and above, it's all right. cable. Like it's between, all between me and Jason. And, and it's less than 5% that's actually using streaming service. However, that's the market that we get asked the most by is how do we get into this streaming world? Well, that's so. I think that that is um, highly affected by the fact that they didn't grow up with as much technology so they transition over to it they're trying to figure out how to do it because that's not what they grew up with where and it's something it's a learning curve too so that's that's the one thing we want to talk about uh for some of the uh silver cloud lined uh, demographic uh that, that's trying to adopt this newer technology what i would say is try them before you cancel your service. Um, yeah, take advantage of and as those Tony stated, free trials. As Tony just stated, 
lower your channel plan. If you're not watching HBO Max, get rid of it. If you're not one one yeah, client cause... told me this yesterday or uh, two days ago that he said, yeah, but when I, I he goes, I did that, Justin. When I went and did that, I only saved ten bucks. That's the thing. Is it's not ten dollars? That's starting. They're not costume. giving you your money back, though. That's the thing is that we, they're not giving the money back that they're charging for it as you cancel it. So that's the other weird thing about cable companies versus the streaming platform. So what I would say, uh, oh, let me just back off for a second. Tone, what would you say the biggest learning curve? streaming versus the cable box is remote i mean what would you the a lot of a lot of it is navigation right i know because when you have a direct tv remote it's pretty straightforward sure yeah you know, numbers are channel numbers up, channel guides down, are guides volume, up, volume down yeah. Yeah. you know records, you have the records. button that says on demand you right. can't get any simpler than that but when you go to using a stream box like an Apple TV or a Roku or an Amazon Fire Stick or you any went of to less button remotes, so that means more multifunction. So now yeah. you you know like trying to navigate Fubo, you know because you have like multi-screen mode, you have the guide mode, and you, you know you it works different ways. And like sometimes what what will happen to me on my Apple TV is I'll be trying to scroll up. So that I can get the guide to come button to come. You're up. talking about the new Apple TV, and, the and the one with the touch or the direction. No, I'm talking about the old OG. Black and silver one. So OG with the yeah. would just touch. And okay. then with that right there, you know, because sometimes when I'm trying to scroll up and get that guide button, it'll end up giving me this row of channels at the bottom to scroll through, and it's like that's not what I wanted it to do, and I'm sitting there for ten minutes trying to get out of that. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and, um, and I'm somebody that uses this stuff all the time i help install this stuff and you know it even gives me trouble yeah so that's that's kind of where i'm at too i, I find if i'm teaching someone that's not you I, and i don't want i'm not picking on older folks here i'm just I, it, that's typically the ones we get asked the question the most about because a lot of them are going into retirement age and with fixed income and they're trying to figure out ways to navigate trying to this get stupid more, uh, topic. More out of their money. So um, what's interesting about that is that's the hardest part. I, I would say it's the hardest part. It, it, to me, it's easier when you have your TV remote or if you hand them their with, TV remote and use yeah, the smart a, app. With a keypad and yep, it still has down. Numeric, but, but here's the weird thing. Most of those streaming services, the keypad's useless except for DirecTV Stream. So if, if you are, if you do fit that demographic or you do fit what I call the technologically, um, our, our technologically... Um, Tech savvy. Uh, non no the non tech the savvy, tech savvy yeah, yeah the less tech savvy crowd then i would say um direct tv stream is probably the easiest to use now we don't work for direct tv or have any we're not affiliated or with them Fubo at all. Or, or any, any of these people companies. but we just get asked this question a lot so we thought you know tony and i thought it would be a hot topic that we could just jump right into um once again it's not an advertisement for hot topic uh I but do, I do still get close with that being said, direct TV stream, you're still using channel numbers and you can flip. You can flip, Tony. That's my biggest thing about Fubo is you cannot flip. You can't flip with Fubo. You can't flip with YouTube TV. You can't flip with Hulu Live. It's more of a guide based. I have to look at the screen and pick what I want instead of mindlessly flipping. Now, you're so not flipping using irritates you. Yes, it flipping irritates me. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, on DirecTV Stream, you can, if you use the left or right navigation arrow, you can flip forward or backwards. You're not using the channel up and down. So there is a little bit of a t technology learning curve with how to use your remote. Uh, to me, Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon seem to be the most complicated because of the multifunction. Because of the simplicity of their remote. Right, and it's a multifunction thing. You have to hit certain buttons, do different things. Yeah, because every button has a modifier on it. Yep. Every time I've tried to show somebody how to use Fubo, their ears smoke. It's just like they, they kind of look at me like, okay, I'm just going to keep cable. 
The thing is, is as we've just seen on the screen, you're actually spending almost a hundred dollars more, if not more. For that remote. For well, no, f yeah, for the for your cable remote, you know. And so the really, it's really, that rem it's really that remote that you're paying for because of the convenience of that and what you can do with it. There's another client that said it's actually cheaper to cancel your cable service and then reactivate your cable service because you'll get a better deal. Now, these are clients that have had cable for 30 plus years that they found that it's easy to divorce them and then get remarried to the same system to save money because they're when you start canceling services, they're not giving you a better deal. So that's, that's also, I found well, that pretty interesting. I know it's month to month so they can get divorced and then just date that person. Yeah. Well, so here's <laughs> the other fun fact. The fun thing about it is you can, now let's go completely cut the cord, cut the cord, cut the streaming and go back to what we know is antenna television. You know, so that is still a thing, ladies and gentlemen. So there are actual built-in digital 3.0, it's called an ATC 3.0 digital tuner built in these newer smart TVs. And you can get an external antenna just like the good old days, not with rabbit ears and foil. And that's why I think I got into the AV industry because I was the darn TV antenna a lot of times. I remember on those console TVs, I was the remote. Right, but we're not talking about streaming crud television like we like we used to when we were and kids. We're not talking this about is four K. Two, eleven, thirteen. Well, no, it 26. is. No, no, no. Those are still there, but they're in four K now. That's right. the thing, and they're free. So, but here's the draw. But you have to have one of those antennas. Yes, and they're not expensive. They're not expensive. They're between typically they're between thirty to eighty bucks. Here's the drawback to that. Unless and, you got a streaming service. Unless you you're living in a home that was built in the 60s, 70s, 80s, or early Me, 90s, right? Some of these antennas may not work. And the reason why is because homes are built better than they used to, meaning they're more yeah, energy cause... efficient. They're more insulated. You're using things like uh, spray foam and tech shielding. And all kinds of things that you your parents' houses yeah, like in my or your house parents' house. house that they still live in doesn't have, and you're gonna have to do a little bit of extra work, right? I mean, and I have just, like yeah. a you know to illustrate your point. In my house, that was built. Uh, you know, it was my grandparents' house that was built long before I was born. And uh, I've got a Firehawk um, wireless router, right? And it covers the whole house but the same house built within the past 10 years you so, wait you it would hit that firehawk i'd have to have one in multiple locations of the house so you can still use your og 19 whatever uh, directional outdoor antenna that's still a thing still if have one you like to have your house struck by lightning uh you can still use that it still works. Um, there is an adapter that you have to use that can that, that it's basically an amplifier that where it can get better, more bandwidth to do that. Or you can go run down to uh, your local audio shop or big box store or Walmart or whatever, and you can buy the what we call the pancake style. It plugs into a 110 outlet and has its own booster. There's another cable box like thing that plugs into the internet and actually uses your internet as the antenna that's kind of skates in and out of the streaming world and that is there is a cost associated with that and then there are still some TiVo warriors out there I never thought I'd hear myself say TiVo anymore unless I was pulling it out there are people that still use TiVo uh, uh, God love Die you. Hard oh, you will have to pry the remote from their cold fingers when because they will not give up on TiVo. Uh, thank you, Byron Wallace and uh, Brian Bowie, that both use TiVo. And anytime I have a TiVo question, I actually call one of these two clients, and they they can answer it better than I ever want to know about it. But a lot of those things are you. But it's still that's a monthly thing because you have to have a cable card for that. And it's a monthly thing, and it, but it is significantly cheaper 
Uh, there's no box rental fee. There's just a cable card. I think once you own the cable card, there's no fee for that. I want to say it's like 30 bucks a month. So it is probably the cheapest uh, cable-ish platform. But we digress. We're talking about amp. We're talking about free. We're talking about free antennas that you can now back when this first started you could actually have gone to those you could have gotten a free antenna Mm -hmm. back in the day back when the hd changeover when they were giving that uh, away to everybody because it was a forced change well those things are still around they still work do that with electric cars uh we uh lynn austin lynn austin uses that in his house he we hooked a coax cable to his tv but we because he had his house spray foamed we had to drill a hole uh, outside penetration hole to the outside of the home and then run the the antenna outside the the pancake antenna right. outside for it to work because uh it was his home had just he had modifications done where it was insulated you know again that goes into your home if you're living in a newer home or apartment complex this may or may not work as well for you. You're going to have to either put it close to a window, on a window, to where it can kind of get that outside road. Now, double pane, triple pane windows also block that because they're made to block stuff from coming into your home or keep stuff that's in your home from getting out of your home. So lots of interesting things. But yes, you can get free television, no cost. It's going to cost yeah, it's you. Still the, there. It's still there. They're still broadcast, and it's actually really good quality. It's at you know uh, uh, when I saw it at, at at his house, I was like, wow, that actually looks like you're streaming it on Fubo or Direct TV Stream or Xfinity Stream or whatever. It looked like a 4K television show, and they had now these newer televisions. If you have a television that was made in the past three or four years. It has one of those ATC 3.0 antennas. There's a lot of interesting things with ATC 3.0 that are coming down the pipe. Live interaction, so that it's so you'll hmm. be able to like. So remember that old show back in the day called Totally Request Live, yeah. where people could get on the internet and type in something. It would be and set you on might the TV see screen. Your stuff come up. That tuner is actually built for that. They haven't added that into. Uh, I, I would be quite afraid to add that into it because God knows what somebody's going to say, but they haven't added that into it uh, yet. But it is, but that what that's what the 3.0 antenna was actually built for, not just 4K. Uh, you can make your own. I'm not saying we'll have to ask our high-tech redneck, uh, Ian, Mr. Grain, how to do that because I'm sure he'll already look at it and said, oh, you just do this and do that. See, I, nope, told, you, I told you I was going to break into the accent. I, so that's one of those things where he's going to, he'll know already how to do that or he's already doing it. That's the thing. Is He would be a fun one to have on the show to talk about something because if there's a way to figure it out, Ian's already forgot it figured out or already done it and just said, oh, you just do this and this. You know, you go find a, a resistor from this place and add it to this and then hold your foot just right and it just works. So um, coming from the same guy who made a projector mount out of PVC pipe uh, and, and still uses it to this day. So with that being said and all in good fun, uh, yes, there is free TV service out there. You can go back and use the antenna. It's just going to take a little bit of work. Maybe talk to your local installer, uh, your local handyman or whatever to kind of go back, you know, scale back a little bit. It still distributes the same way as it used to be. You're still using coax splitters or you can use one of those antennas into a coax splitter right. and then distribute it throughout your home just like it was back in the day. You know, and so that's that's the thing. We're just talking about copper cable that's running through your house, guys. It's not it's not the end of the world. Now, if you have a newer home that does not have the copper cable, then you can use network cable, and there's a couple different methods to, to do that. But with that being said, the 100 percent there there is a free way to do this where you're saving. What we're talking about, thirty to a hundred bucks a month, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, you know, or even more than that if you're using the the cable TV service. So, uh, cord cutting, going back full circle, 
What I would do if you're asking us this question is I would take a hard look at what you're using for entertainment because you may find you fall into the on-demand category. You don't need a TV service. You don't need a streaming service where you're doing where you're doing all the things. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I've, I've kind of looked at it now, started looking at my expenses and I'm like, you know, Peacock is this and Apple TV is this and Hulu and Disney. And what channels this. are overlapping? Yeah. And here's the thing. we Because we're in the birth of this market, um, it's going to get complicated. In fact, I think it'll get complicated before it gets streamlined because you and I saw that article yesterday that ESPN, FSN, and CBS are butting heads. They're, 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 they're butting helmets here because everybody's fighting for sports. Well, the other thing is also, and I don't know all the details on it, so I'm just going to vaguely mention this, is that a lot of the other streaming services are in a tiff with Disney, Hulu, ESPN because those three being all together they're feeling like that's creating a type of monopoly um well and i I, now that you and i have looked at the ownership percentages i understand that a little better because because there's because they're all owned by disney but yeah they're all owned but disney's the biggest kid big disney's got the biggest checkbook in that situation which is why they're calling it a monopoly um which makes sense now because i didn't get that at first and then now that I've seen it, n- n- that that makes a little bit, that kind of draws the picture a little bit better there. But what's happening is the NFL, NFL has their own app. Now CBS has the CBS Sports app. FSN wants their own app. Uh, the Astros uh, got in a fight with what was used to be called ATT Sportsnet. And I think the Astros bought their own network. Is that did I did I not uh, uh, understand that correctly? I think it's it's. I don't. I'm not sure what it's called. Uh, we'll have to look that up. Uh, Tony will look that up for quick. us. But but yeah, the Astros got in a fight with the local television stations. Uh, something about not airing certain games. I know uh, that was a big deal back when they were in the play or when they were in the World Series. Not this past year, but a couple years prior, um, that it was an away game. Fubo did not have rights to that away game, even though you had ATT Sportsnet through Fubo, and you had to watch it in Spanish. I think you had to watch it in. Uh, yes, yeah. they own their their own RSN. Okay, so they're calling, they, it- and it's not just them. They've actually joined along with the Cubs, the Yankees, the Mets, the Dodgers. Okay, and the Red Sox. so this is interesting. So now we have individual sports teams that want your ten dollars a month, and fifteen dollars a month, and twenty dollars a so month. If you don't know what RSN eh, RSN is, that's Regional Sports Network. Okay, so thank you for that. Now that, that I thought I thought I had something to do with at Dome something or Astro something. Uh, I thought the network was called a day. It doesn't matter. I mean, it, it doesn't well, affect this, me at all. We're just trying to educate give the listeners. exact names of the networks. It's um, just saying, along with the Astros, there are four, five, five other teams that are doing the same thing. Yeah, now internet service providers are jumping on the bandwagon saying, you, you know, if you get Takis, then you get the Astros for free or whatever but you know it's just man everybody here's the thing and uh the like for instance the space city the Astros, it's called, it's space, called space city uh, home uh, network sca yeah schn space city home network okay that's what it was thank you so um so for those that are going to watch astros this coming baseball season you need to make sure your cable service Check provider this out, though. okay on. go for it but it says right here the houston astros and houston rockets Announced today that they are acquiring AT and T Sportsnet Southwest. Well, so we knew that. Yeah, so that's what I was talking from about. From Warner Brothers. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was that was the network that Fubo had access to, that very other very few of the other streaming services had access. So meaning, if you had Xfinity, uh, you couldn't watch the Astros. If you have, you know, because they're starting to block those games off of those. So we are in the middle. But DirecTV did earn them back. I don't think, 
you guys realize this, but we're about to be in the middle of a of sports war at the moment. You know, you can see it brewing. You can feel it brewing. Uh, that article yesterday that, that Tony and I came across uh, talking about FSN versus ESPN versus CBS, that they're, they're in league out legal, uh, taking legal action toward one another to get certain amount of football games and things like that. Um, there was a gentleman yesterday, or no, no, oh, uh, not yesterday. Um, Last year we had the first f- football game. I think it was a football Texans. Game. The, the Texans, you, you could, could not, not watch, watch it unless you had, had Peacock, right? Uh, or was no, it Peacock or no, Paramount? It, no, it was Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah. So there was a Texans playoff game that you could not watch unless you had a streaming service. And that was – it blows – No, no, no. Specifically Amazon Prime. That was the only Why not? network. Oh, no, right. So you had to have this app to watch this game. Right. Just the one game. Not the whole season. Just one game. So it looks like that you're – you may start seeing a situation where people are going to start clamoring for rights to games, meaning that if you want to watch this game, you got to have this. Well, it just to me, it just in my opinion, it just pushes people towards sports bars. Sports bars are the ones that I feel sorry for because good grief, can you? You're going to have to hire somebody just to keep up with that. You know what I mean? Right. Just just to have that thing. Um, I think most sports bars. I talked to one sports bar owner. Uh, last week, what well, you know, what he was doing on the uh, because of the NFL Sunday Ticket thing, a lot of them have switched to YouTube TV. A lot of them have to get commercial packages because if YouTube TV figures that out that you're a commercial entity, but broadcasting X, Y, and Z, that they'll shut you down. So there's a lot of interesting trickery that you've got to jump in and out of and weave in and out of to to start doing some of those things. Most of them have kept direct TV. The reason why NFL Sunday Ticket was such a big deal is you got in zone and out of zone games. You literally got every NFL game that was broadcast uh, out there, and that, and you were paying a lot of money for that, up to three hundred bucks. Yeah, uh, and um, as of twenty twenty three, Thursday night football. We all remember Thursday night football. Monday night and Thursday night and Sunday. The, right. Yeah. The reason you don't just see advertisements for Thursday night football anymore is because Amazon has the exclusive. So that's the thing, you know. So. If uh, if you're a sports person and you're just a, or or one of, what do you call it the uh, uh, the leagues that all these people do on the side in the fantasy league yeah if you're, if you're a fantasy league guy then then yeah that's gonna be a little bit more difficult now you can go to the NFL app and see play by play you're not actually seeing the game you're just seeing field movement same thing with MLB. Uh, yeah, no, but I think we're crossing into murky water when it comes to that sports stuff because uh, people are buying rights to them, and guess what? They're a business. Sports teams are a business just like everybody else. The reason why YouTube YouTube beat out DirecTV by $2 million, I think, or a million dollars. It was like one to two million, I think, is they beat exactly. DirecTV out. And that's not a lot of money when you're talking about sports. You know, when you're talking about giant corporations, one to two million dollars – isn't a lot of money. I think DirecTV got a little hurt, and they they were just like, "No, we're not paying you anything else because you've been with the, we started you, you know, we we created you," and but they did, you know. So that's the so I have a feeling that if you're a sports warrior, uh, you're in for some shaking and bacon. Mm, bacon, it's morning, so we had the bacon. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're in for some for for some. Um, interesting scenarios there because uh, as Tony and I just learned yesterday, this article literally hot off the press s- stated that these three entities were actually entering a litigation mode or hey, we gotta work this out at the table mode because they're starting to fight with each other, you know and because um, I think even the Super Bowl this year on the numbers of the Super Bowl it, again, it was actually streamed more than people were watching it on either antenna television or uh, um, cable boxes. So the the interesting thing about streaming that we're going to crack – that they're going to crack down on, we're not going to do anything. Uh, and I think Netflix has already started the crackdown was uh, that account usage. You know, there's a lot of, hey, our family has one account. 
and and everybody is kind of just jumping on their account and using their television and stuff, meaning that those services are going to lose money until they start learning more about how that technology works. And that's always going to be a learning curve. Netflix learned it. They were losing millions off of people sharing Netflix accounts and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, so I, the, the answer of it, so Crystal Ball, you know, Tony, is it cheaper to do that? And what is your advice? So, yes and no, I still stick with that. Okay. Because I'll take it. it depends on what your add-ons are and what stations you need. Okay. Versus once you just want. So you got to do a little bit of research. Little so bit, little what bit I recommend. Yeah, there. and that's what I was yeah. going to say is so what I would recommend is instead of just saying, all right, I'm going to go with, I heard him say Fubo enough times, I'm just going to go with that. Right. That may not make sense to you. Right. Because you may not get the channels you want. It may make more sense to go with Verizon or go with DirecTV. It just it just Verizon. depends. Does Verizon have a streaming service? Uh, I believe so. They yes. have an internet. I know they started an internet service. I didn't know they actually had a cable service. That's interesting. Um, there's even sorry, I broke your flow. Go yeah. yeah. But uh, but anyway, just you know, whichever streaming service you decide to go with, the biggest thing is just making sure that it has what you're watching the most of. Because if you don't, if it doesn't have something that you're watching all the time, and you have to add that to it. Then you start determining, are you paying less or not? Yeah. No, bottom line, uh, I think I agree. So my general sense is crystal ball is try it before you buy it. Rule number one, uh, make sure that streaming works for you. As discussed, the, the remote can get a little cumbersome trying to use the the multi buttons and certain buttons do multiple things when you're in different menus. Uh, some people adapt to that very well, some people don't. So I, again, I, I would 100% tell someone to try it before, the, before they buy it. Um, the thing is, is do what's right for you guys. I mean, do what's right for you, do what's right for your entertainment. Again, at the end of the day, this is about entertainment. It's about enjoying that experience and just because your kid does it and they come over for christmas or whatever and say well mom and dad this is what you need to do or this is what you need to uh, maybe not you know maybe maybe not you know so some people can't get past the fact that apple tv is called apple tv but it's not a tv so that's what i'm saying if you're one of those people and you're comfortable where you're at uh again there there was a client that said you know, actually it was cheaper to go cancel my service, wait a day and then come back and reactivate my service because I got the best deal and then stayed in that deal. And they kept doing that about every year. Uh, if that works for you, then do what works for you. But what I would say is take an evaluation. Look at that 7 to $10 cable box fee. If you have rooms that are empty in your home that nobody's watching those TVs, get rid of them. You know, get get rid of those cable boxes and, and, and condense that. People aren't coming over to watch your cable boxes. They're coming over to see you guys. So uh, do that. You know, there's lots of ways to save money in this realm. But I would not suggest jumping into the streaming category if you haven't tried it or experienced it as of yet. Because it's a lot harder to go backward once you've cut the cord, removed all the boxes, you know, got you taken the junk to the store, had it mailed to the thing, and it, it's harder to go backwards because then you got to start all over again. So what I would say is just be careful. You know, do your research, talk to your experts, look at the pricing, see if it, see if it actually is cheaper or not. I'm just going to bounce off on what Tony just said. You know, I agree. It is and it isn't. It just depends on how you use it. You know, they have built a mousetrap for you. They have figured out a way to take your money at $70 a month or $80 a month or $10 a month, depending on how many of these little service add-ons that you do. They figured it out. They're going to trap you. They're going to take your money. That's just what they're going to do. And, 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 and I'm a victim of it. I've, I've also done that and had to take a step back and say, well, wait a minute. I can go to Peacock and Hulu and get the same stuff. I don't need Peacock and Hulu. 
and I can go to this and that and get the same stuff. I don't need this and that. So that's the thing. You know, you also have services like Amazon Prime that they just announced uh, yesterday that they're no longer doing Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision. Meaning if you have a theater room and that's your source of, that's your, 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 your choice of weaponry there, then you're not getting, you're definitely not getting the best out of your system. So, you know, that, that kind of goes back into episode number one. But what I'm saying is it's not for everyone, but it is fun. I know that, uh, Tony, I've enjoyed the on-demand aspect of everything. I, I know that I think it's neat that I can go watch seasons and episodes of whatever, whenever I want, however I want. And it, it kind of makes the DVR a mute point. So the DVR, 1,000 hours of DVR stuff doesn't really entice me to do anything because I can go watch it whenever I want to. So that's the bottom line with the streaming cable or cutting the cable or doing one or the other. Uh, the one point that we did not jump on, if you are using the coax method with the antenna, you can't record things. So that's, the, and I didn't think about that until just now. There's not a way to record uh, that content. So you're back to kind of like it was back in the old days where, oh no, we can't go anywhere because the game comes on at this time. Or, or uh, back then it was like family ties and, you know, whatever. <laughs> this show is coming on. We can't leave because Star Trek comes on at this time. You know, we got to be back by this time. So if you want to be bound to that kind of crazy, then, you know, that's okay too. That's why DVRs existed. I can always record it on my VHS machine that I still got. <laughs> Yeah, on your $100 copy of The Crow. You... <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I can't record over that. That was $100. No, that was 100 bucks, man. No, what, are you stupid? Yeah, and it's probably worth more than that now. That's the thing. So at the end of the day, if it's, if it's not for you, then there's nothing wrong with you. It's okay. But it is the trend. It's not going anywhere. It's here to stay. Eventually, you're going to get a letter from your cable company or an email from your cable company that says, hey, we are no longer supporting X, Y, and Z. I'm not saying that's happening tomorrow. I'm just saying it's inevitably going to happen because if you think about it, it's cheaper for them to push streaming onto you. They don't have to pay technicians. They don't have cable boxes to contend with. They don't have remotes to keep up with. They don't even really have to have a store for you to go to to take all these things back to. So it's less moving parts and liability for this particular style of company. And we've already seen, Tony and I have already seen that trend with several of these, uh, especially DirecTV. DirecTV's completely changed their model on their boxes and whatnot with these little hockey puck looking things that basically look like Amazon stuff. So that's the thing. Um, there's several ways to do it. If this confused you even more, please, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we're happy to bore you some more with this redundant information that you may or may not already know, but uh, it's confusing. It's at the end of the day, this is a confusing topic and it, because there's so many different ways to get to the same thing. You know, you've got your smart TV, you got a streamer box. Now your cable boxes are getting to those apps. That's the thing. This whole thing is getting diluted because everybody wants to be on top. We're not sure who's going to win yet. Just depends on how the, the water falls or the, the, you know, the chips lay on the table at the end of all this mess. So with that being said, this is podcast number two on Technology Rocks. What we're trying to do is make technology fun and fill you, fill you in on the blanks without making it uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off with Ben Stein. Uh, nothing against Ben Stein. But um, we're, just, we're just trying to have fun while we're doing it. And, and some of these questions we get asked quite a bit. Might as well, we might as well answer the question all at once. So... Thank you for joining us. I'm Justin. And I'm Tony. And this is Technology Rocks episode two duo. So 
Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Please, please, please like or subscribe. You guys help us out when you do that. And you also help us out with your comments on Facebook. There's already been a few out there. Thank you so much for your feedback. That That's definitely helpful when it comes to, to creating new things. Because, you know, Tony and I run out of stuff to talk about. You would think we wouldn't run out of stuff to talk about. Especially me. However, uh, Facebook... Uh, YouTube doesn't really work just, I mean, we're, are, we have do it yourself videos on YouTube. We're going to actually start video casting this stuff too. Eventually, not yet. Got to walk before you run, but you can find us on Spotify, Apple podcast, uh, Amazon music, tune in radio, iHeartRadio, radio, and more to come with all those. Or if you would like to go directly to the source, go to RSS feed. You can find us on RSS all the things. So love to hear from you. Have a great day. Whatever you're doing, be safe. Be careful for goodness sake. Stop looking at your phone and start playing podcast, especially this one and have a great day.